listen. Tonight's story has the title, White is the Color. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. This story has a single point to make, the struggle for the preservation of life. It centers around the men and women who have dedicated their lives to that struggle. Their title, Doctor of Medicine. There's too much dignity and too much suffering in the fact of life to justify any romantic compromises with truth. There's excitement enough and triumph enough in truth. Tonight's case in point is Estelle Alberta Collins, 29 years old. She was married seven years before the first baby began. That means a lot. In her sixth month of pregnancy, she began to develop symptoms I didn't like. And two weeks later, April 11th, the final answer was spread out on a glass slide under a microscope in the laboratory of Dr. George E. Fletcher, hematologist. Not much doubt about it. Not in my opinion. Want to try to get Dr. Steiner for me? Yes, sir. Dr. Steiner's office? Oh, yes, Dr. Fletcher. Yes, he's right here. Just a moment, please. Dr. Fletcher with a report for Mrs. Collins. Right. Hello, George. How are you? Not too bad. A little busy. George, you work up the report on Miss Collins? Yeah. Uh -huh. What's your impression? Uh. Yeah. I see. No, I guess I was just looking for a miracle. All right, George. Thank you. We got a phone number for Miss Collins' husband. Place of business? Well, I believe he works at home, if I'm not mistaken. The commercial artist is something. Excuse me, Doctor, let me see. The laboratory report was far from encouraging. It was the last thing in the world I wanted to do, but there was no choice. I called the patient's husband, a self-employed commercial artist, and made an appointment to meet with him that night in my office. Because of her condition, I asked him not to mention it to his wife. I'm 
go home. Come to Mother, tell her everything. What's the matter? Would you like that old nasty $3 steak we have for dinner? Oh, it's nothing. I was just thinking. Yeah? Don't forget the latest news and sports in just five minutes. How are you feeling, Stella? I don't know. What have you got in mind? I didn't see Holloway tonight. That was just an alibi. I went to see Dr. Steiner. I was him on the phone this afternoon. What did he want? It's going to be rough, Stel. Rough as it comes. You sound like you're going to club me. I am. Steiner wanted to make sure. He had a couple of the other doctors check it. They went over the whole thing. Went over what? What do you mean? He said we'd lose the baby. Well, Steiner said everything went well, the baby be a normal, healthy kid. Well, then what is it? Tell me. Larry, don't be silly. Tell me, what is it? It's you, Stell. Me? That's why they took all those blood tests. Why? Well, there's something wrong with you. It's leukemia. Leukemia? Something to do with the white blood cells. It's no good. There's too many white blood cells. It's no good. Well, what does it mean? What do I do? It's acute leukemia. Well, what happens? How do they treat it? Do I take shots or something? I'm going to give it to you straight, Stel. It's fatal. I can't save you. Just like anybody else. 
It's not the Almighty. And my baby? You sure it won't affect him? But for some reason, we don't understand. The leukemia stops at the placenta. He'll have a good chance? If he's eight months along when he's born, I'd say he'd have a good chance. You think I'll last that long? Honestly? Well, it might even be longer. We can't say. One thing I can tell you, we're going to help you all we can. How? But we've got to understand this. It's not a cure. It's what we call a palliative treatment. See, in your case, the use of x-ray therapy is out of the question. It might harm the baby. Oh, no, I wouldn't want that. The baby comes first. When there are some drugs that have been developed, they won't harm the baby. And they could help. And they might give me a little more time? Well, the more effective the drug, the longer the time you'll have. And the longer I live, the better chance the baby has. That's right. I guess it's silly. Do you think I might do it? Live long enough to see the baby born? Right. It's possible. It'd be kind of nice to see him, wouldn't it? See what he looks like. Color of his hair. To see him just once. Just once. Doctor? Do you think I'm asking for a miracle? Well, you go ahead and ask. I've seen them happen. April 20th, 7.30 p.m. The patient, Estelle Collins, accompanied by her husband, arrived at St. Charles Hospital. She was in her 26th week of pregnancy. Her fight for life had begun. Not a fight for her own life. That much was hopeless. She realized it. She accepted it. The fight was for the life of her unborn child. If it was to have a good chance of survival, she had to fight death for at least six weeks. The leukemia had no association whatsoever with her pregnancy. One of the critical moves in the struggle for the life of the unborn Collins baby was made the following morning, April 21st, 10 a.m. Those directly associated in the case, George A. Fletcher, M.D., hematologist, Avril B. Morrison, M.D., hematologist originally consulted, Arnold James Wesley, M.D., St. Charles Hospital resident physician, and myself. Initial therapy includes prescribing for the patient a daily dosage orally of 0.5 milligrams of a folic acid antagonist, hemithopterin. It's a drug designed to reduce the excess number of white cells in the blood to destroy them at their source. In some previous cases, it's proved toxic. How the patient might react, we have no idea. Also, we have no choice. Whole blood will be transfused as needed. April 30th, 2.30 p.m. A dosage of 0.5 milligrams of amethoptrin has shown some effect. White count 60,000. It's possible the drug is retarding the progress of the disease. In any event, the baby is nine days closer to life. Look, now there's going to be no argument to the name, no matter what your mother says. Okay. Lawrence Randolph Collins, Jr. From? Yeah. Unless it's a little girl. Then you can name it after your mother. How are they going to treat him? Food pretty good? It's all right. <laughs> the nurses or something. Too bad you can't be around to hear it. What do you mean? Every night, regular, 11 o'clock. We start playing shuffleboard with the bedpans. Patient's white count, 80,000. She sustained two minor internal hemorrhages to date. May 18th, the patient is approaching her 30th week of pregnancy. White count, over 90,000. No sign of remission. Patient steadily declining. A complete setup for possible emergency surgery is placed in the patient's room. May 26th, the patient has sustained additional internal hemorrhages. The dosage of amethoptrin has become toxic. Patient's mouth is inflamed. White count, 100,000. Chances for the baby's survival, we can't be sure. Dr. Steiner. Yo, Wesley. Another hemorrhage, why don't you start? You move her up to surgery? Yes, move her up there now. 
Wesley, you call Mr. Collins? Call him. All right, Wesley, I'll be right in. Yeah. I arrived at St. Charles Hospital a few minutes past 3 a.m. Preparations for surgery were just about completed. I changed my clothes and went immediately to the scrub room. The hospital resident, Dr. Wesley, was standing by to assist. How's it look, Wes? Pretty sour. Yeah, it seems to be. How is she? Poor. Pressure's way down. Respiration? 30. Very shallow. Pulse, weak and thready. About 140. I'm assisting her now. Doctor? I clean out the mouth. No breathing? No, Doctor. Trachea catheter. Three minutes. 
Right. Give me these two. Come on, let me have it. Caffeine, sodium, benzoate. Right amount. surgery this morning. Thanks again, wife. Dr. Steiner? Yeah. The husband's outside. Mr. Collins? Tell him I'll be out and talk to him in a minute. Do you want me to tell him his wife died? No. Tell him his baby lives. 